Good morning. What now for Jeremiah and Ebed Melech? We're reading now from Jeremiah chapter 39 today, verses 11 to 18. Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave charge concerning Jeremiah to Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, saying, Take him and look after him and do him no harm, but do to him just as he says to you. So Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, sent Nebuchadnezzar, Rabsaris, Nergal Sherezer, and Rabmeg, and all the king of Babylon's chief officers. Then they sent someone to take Jeremiah from the court of the prison and committed him to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, that he should take him home. So he dwelt among the people. Meanwhile, the word of the Lord had come to Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Go and speak to Ebed Melech, the Ethiopian, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring my words upon this city for, for adversity and not for good, and they shall be performed in that day before you. But I will deliver you in that day, says the Lord, and you shall not be given into the hand of the men of whom you are afraid. For I will surely deliver you, and you shall not fall by the sword, but your life shall be as a prize to you, because you have put your trust in me, says the Lord. Now, the king of Babylon knows something about the happenings inside Jerusalem these past 30 months. And he knows Jeremiah has advised the people. And even before that, even before the army was there, uh, Jeremiah was suggesting that they work with Babylon because that was what God told him. That was the command. That was the plan. So Nebuchadnezzar directs them to release Jeremiah, and Nebuchadnezzar appoints Gedaliah to be the governor. Jeremiah remains in Jerusalem initially, and he receives a word from the Lord. The Lord says, hey, go find Ebed Melech. Give him the message I have for him. And it's a word of encouragement. You know, within Jerusalem, Jeremiah and Ebed Melech, there were not very many who stood up. There was a lot of unhappy people there when they looked and saw their faces. So the word is that the punishment of the city is going to continue. This is God's word to Ebed Melech. I'm going to continue to punish the city, finish this plan I have. But you're going to be saved. Your life is a prize for you because you have done the right thing. So that's what we have here is a word of encouragement for Ebed Melech. We're not told the insights about how Ebed Melech is thinking, but God wants to encourage Ebed Melech. Why is Ebed Melech to be encouraged? Because, because he trusted in the Lord. He put his trust in him. And so God is pers a personal God. He wants Ebed Melech to be encouraged. In spite of the persecution and harassment directed toward Jeremiah, Ebed Melech helped Jeremiah in these hard, hard times. And God is rewarding Ebed Melech for doing the right thing. And now, in contrast, King Zedekiah, God gave him every opportunity to relent and change direction. And he pled with him again and again through Jeremiah, his servant, but he wouldn't do it. And so now Zedekiah has reached his judgment. The princes, kind of the uh, some of the chief bad guys in the whole mix, they are carried off to Babylon, going to end their experience there. It's, it's, it's a tragedy from every side. Because people were intransigent, they refused to work with the Lord. So God isn't done with his people, but their situation has entered a different phase. Now there's going to be, after the conclusion of this hard period, now there's going to begin to be a turnaround as different influences come eventually into play. God is on the side of his people. He hasn't abandoned them, not at all. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we can always trust you. You are forever faithful. You're looking for faithful servants. Lord, help us to be those faithful servants. Please uh, watch over us. Be our God. Be our guide. Be our helper. Show us the way forward that you have for us. Ebed Malik was faithful. Jeremiah was faithful. Help us to be like that. Maybe that's the minority. It doesn't really matter, does it? Because with you on our side, Lord, we're a majority. Hear our prayer and bless us this day, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, God's servants need to keep fresh about what his work at this time is. Situations change. If we stay close to him, he'll be our guide through any unusual twist or turn he allows in the work. Let's walk with Jesus today. God be with you.